Cardiac resynchronization therapy has been a phenomenal therapeutic modality in patients with LV dysfunction mm -hmm. and an ECG finding called QRS duration greater than 150 milliseconds. But in the clinical trials, they've excluded a group of patients with very wide QRS duration, and we really wanted to study what the role of cardiac resynchronization therapy is in this group. And uh, that's uh, the reason why we conducted this study. So when you went and looked at the real world registry in the Medicare ICD registry, which is the largest device registry in the United States, close to 20% of the CRT implantations was for those with the QRS duration of greater than 180 milliseconds, who were actually missed or underrepresented in the clinical trials. So we really wanted to know what the outcomes of resynchronization therapy is in this group. So what we found was in patients with right bundle branch block group, that's a specific ECG finding, with QRS duration of greater than 180 milliseconds, did not do too well. So, but these patients in real world have been getting these devices. So this really makes us think or rethink the use of uh, the device in this particular group of patients. These patients with QRS, what we did in our study was we took patients, divided them into three groups based on the QRS duration, and the next thing is we divided them even further based on the bundle branch block morphology. That is left bundle branch block, right bundle branch block, and IVCD. So in this, so those patients with right bundle branch block and QRS duration of greater than 180 milliseconds were the ones who had the highest hazard ratios for mortality, meaning that compared to the other groups, these groups did not do too well or did not respond as well to cardiac resynchronization therapy. So that was the overall finding. So that's, uh, our study had limitations, but with inherent limitations of the registry, this, these are our findings. The clinical trials have, uh, have been in cardiology has really moved the field forward we, we have had more than 10 clinical trials in cardiac resynchronization therapy showing uh, an absolute risk reduction of more than 10%. But there are some patients who we see in real world who have been underrepresented or missed in clinical trials. So this registry or some registries really gives us an opportunity to look at the outcome in this group of patients. And this is one such group which we found were not doing too well. So especially, so when we see these patients in clinical practice, especially those who have really high comorbidities, we should really think twice about putting in this device, which uh, is, uh, though it's great, but it's also an expensive device, and it's an invasive procedure which comes with its own risks.